most investors, when they talk to you and they say, well, we're interested, we like the valuation, now let's talk about due diligence. If you've got somebody like Will, that they will tell you beforehand what due diligence questions I will actually have for you. Because every angel investor on the whole will ask you the same questions. Try and seem professional in the sense of, even if you haven't gone through the process before, have your paperwork ready. I always tell the, the, the companies that I've invested in when they're going out to do the next round of funding, I said, get the due diligence packs already printed out, ready to go. The minute somebody says, I'm interested, I want a due diligence pack, I want your business plan, I want your employment contracts, I want to, you know, where are you on the IP side of it, or, or, or you know, uh, where, what contracts have you signed? If you just hand, if I, we've already got that ready, here it is. As a management team, that adds a lot of value to you, especially if you're a first, you know, a lot of, invest, a lot of entrepreneurs I invest in, it's the first time they've ever run a business. And for me, I'm always concerned, how professional, how much do they actually understand about what they're doing? I understand that this is your first time, but there's certain basic things I, I would expect you to understand about management. What, what you don't understand, as an investor, I will support you. I've been involved now with nearly 20 startup businesses. I know how to run an early stage business. I don't expect you to know everything about running a business. I expect you to actually have basic management principles though. <coughs> the other thing that I, I find for me, and it's, it's, something, it's a bit of a personal thing for me, and I know it's, it's easier for me to say as an investor than sometimes you as an entrepreneur. <coughs> the funding models that some of you have, or some of the companies that I've seen have, if you come to me and say, Michael, I want to raise half a million today, and that's going to get me through to a, a four or five million round in six months time, or even a, another half a million in six months' time. For me, that is a very bad investment opportunity. Uh, mainly for the reason is, as we've talked about already, to actually um, fundraise pretty much will take all of your time for a minimum six months. And I'm investing in you as the management. To, I want you to be able to concentrate for a minimum of 12 months on, on, on growing the business before having to start looking for further funding. So I want companies to raise at least 18 months worth of money. Um, and I would say 18 months, if you're pre-revenue, I would always make the assumption that you're not going to get a, any revenue in the next 18 months. Um, and, and I think for me, that, that is actually a critical point. If you're going out and saying, I'm going to raise money now, I'm going to raise money in six months' time, I'm going to raise money in another six months' time, who's going to run the business whilst you're actually out fundraising? Um, it, it is amazing how time-consuming it is for um, the entrepreneur. Um, the worst investment that I can actually make um, is not actually a failed business. I accept that what I'm doing is high risk. Um, the worst for me is actually um, a lifestyle business. So the only person who's really having a nice, nice time about it is actually the entrepreneur on a nice high salary. Um, <coughs> If you're coming and you're saying, I'm raising half a million pounds, um, and I, you know, my market, if I had a job in the real world, I'm going to be paid 100,000 pounds a year. You know, so I'll take a slight discount, I'm going to be paid 90,000 pounds a year. That's going to be my salary. For a startup business, again, that is not something that I'm willing to accept. I want, if you have a large equity stake within the business, that is why you're working. You know, for me, most entrepreneurs for an early stage business, Give or take will be on, on salaries of around 30,000 or so. You know, um, I don't you know, accept the fact that you need to have large salaries. And it's just something that, for me, that's quite a personal one, but a lot of the angels I've talked about, it is actually after I would say, um, you know, valuation. It's people's salaries um, that I have, you know, that, that cause a lot of companies to actually fail. Um, it also amazes me, especially, I would say, during the dot-com era. It was quite entertaining. I would hear a 15-minute presentation, and at the end of it, the last thing they would say is, our exit strategy is in three years' time, will I IPO or trade sale? That's it. In terms of, for me, I'm investing because I want to make money. Actually, quite a critical part of what I want you to be thinking about is, where is your exit strategy? What is the thought process that you've actually put into, the, into your business to actually where it is going to lead that both you and I will actually be making money. 
Um, I know, I understand that it changes probably every six months. There'll be somebody else comes, you know, companies I invested in, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago. You know, Facebook, Google, and such like weren't around there. And now they are the perfect potential exit opportunities for me. But I think if you don't have an exit strategy, how do you have any strategy whatsoever? You're looking to grow the business for an exit. That's what I want to see. So it's important that I understand how you're looking to grow and what the market opportunity is. But if you know who you're aiming to exit to, that means that will actually dictate some of the decisions that you actually make um, when, when the company is growing. Because <coughs> just taking on sometimes revenue for revenue sake does not actually sometimes add bottom line value to the business. Something else which I, I, I think it's important to understand, I'm investing in high-risk businesses. I understand that for quite a lot of entrepreneurs to get to where they are, to even come and talk to me, they've probably had to cut a few corners, you, you know, and I, I understand that. What I don't, wouldn't like to have happen, though, is I don't like surprises. If you tell me, Michael, I've got all this debt, I've, got, I've taken out this loan from a mate of mine, but it's not really in the finances because, you know, I was hoping to pay them back later and whatever. I understand that sometimes you have to beg and borrow to get the money to bootstrap the company to get it to where it is today. And I think it's actually quite important that you actually tell me everything, even if, there's a, if you have a, a troublesome employee who wants to take you to, uh, you know, to an uh, employment tribunal. Tell me up front. It is not necessarily going to scare me. The only thing you can guarantee, though, is at some point in time, I'm actually going to find out during the due diligence and the only thing that I'm going to do when I find out is walk away, because I'm investing in, in, in you, and I'm trusting that you, that you are doing everything honest with, you know, you're being very honest with me. And if I, if I doubt that for one minute, I will walk away from the um, deal. Something else that Will talked about is fees. Um, I have a very strict rule, and this is my personal rule, but I'm sure many of the investors in here would agree with me. If I'm investing into a business and more than 10% of the money is going out on fees on the first day, I will not do the investment. The fees can be legal fees, they can be network fees, they can be advisor fees. Um, the money that I'm giving you, I want to be invested in the business for it to grow. Um, and sometimes you sign contracts because you don't know what is acceptable and not acceptable. Um, I would actually say sometimes the best people to negotiate it for you is actually the investors themselves rather than you as the entrepreneurs, especially if it's through the, the networks themselves. But it, it's, it's critical that you actually understand where the money is going. And if you've got a strong lead investor or if you're dealing with somebody who actually understands early stage businesses and has done quite a few investments in terms of the legal side of it, you... The legals, which is where a lot of the money actually goes on, are bog standard. They're not, they shouldn't be complicated. They, they shouldn't need to be changed that much. It, on the whole, most angel investors will invest in ordinary shares. The only thing that should be adapted is sometimes the consent matters. Um, and to be quite honest, you can deal with all the negotiations before you even get to the legals. You know, so when you're, you know, as a piece of advice to you, when you're talking to the lawyers and you're, getting, you're, you're signing them up, get them to do a fixed fee. You know that's a, I've never met a lawyer yet who hasn't charged the maximum of, a, of what the fixed fee is. <laughs> Will, Will's looking at me now, so he'll probably shoot me afterwards. But um, I think it's very important that you know exactly what the cost is going to be. When you talk to, if you go through an angel network to raise money, talk to a number of them. Find out what all the fees are. And trust me, if you're a good company, they will negotiate on their fees. You know, because um, they want to have good companies to present to people like myself. Um, and a very personal, and this is, this is something that I absolutely, this is totally personal on my fact. If, if you ever, if any of you do end up presenting to me, if you want to, um, please in your, presentation, do not use the word conservative. I hate that word. 
you're not being conservative. I don't believe you're being conservative. And to be quite honest, I don't want to invest in somebody who is conservative. The whole point of an entrepreneur is that you, 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 dream, you dream the dreams. And to be quite honest, as the investor, part of my, my job is actually to try and bring you back to reality. Um, you know, the, the hockey sticks that I see, you've got to understand, you can spend as much time on your, you know, your, your finances and your sales forecasts as, as you want. No investor is ever going to believe them. They'll, they'll redo them themselves. The only thing that they will look at in terms of your financials is actually your cash flow forecast, because that is something that you can actually control. Um, you know, of the 20 investments I've made, not a single one has come remotely close, either over or under, their first year or two year you know, sales forecasts. And that's even after I've rewritten them. So I don't know much more either. Um, and I think really that is the, the, the main things that I would actually say. Um, there's lots of other bits and bobs out there which you can say causes deals to, to flounder. But um, if I can leave you with well, one bit, if you're raising money, first person you try and find is your lead investor. And it's amazing, most lead investors will actually f help you find the rest of the money because they've had experience, they know who the other investors are who would be interested in it. And also, know who you're presenting to. If it's VCs or angels, understand who they are and try and find out as much about them as possible before you actually present to them. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>